Hello everyone, it is March 25th, 2021. I'm doing this one without the aid of my headphones, so if it's a little bit louder today, I'm sorry. Um, I just have a, kind of have a bad headache today, so this is going to be overall just a little less energetic. I think I took some medication, so hopefully it'll start kicking in halfway through. Um, today we're going to be reading through the book of 2 Samuel chapter 21. And Jesus is calling for today, March uh, 25th. So without further ado, let's jump into it. Let the, or yeah, let thankfulness temper all your thoughts. A thankful mind set keeps you in touch with me. I hate it when my children grumble, casually despising my sovereignty. Thankfulness is a safeguard against this deadly sin. Furthermore, a grateful attitude becomes a grind through which you perceive life. Gratitude enables you to see the light of my presence shining all on all your circumstances. Cultivate a thankful heart for this glorifies me and fills you with joy. Wow, one second, sorry. I always forget to do that. Um, and that was inspired by three different uh, sections of the Bible. Do not grumble as some of them did and were killed by destroying uh, the angel. 1 Corinthians 10 and 10. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and worship God acceptably with reverence and awe for our God is a consuming fire. Hebrews 12, 28 and 29. Um, let the word of Christ dwell in you richly as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom. And as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God. Uh, Colossians 3.16 Giving thanks to God in all circumstances. Uh, that can be a tough thing to do. Right now with this headache, uh, I am. I'm thankful that we live in a day and age when, uh, you know, we can have medication to help us out uh, when things aren't feeling too great. Um, for my wife for driving me when we ran out of stuff, uh, for giving me uh, her and giving her me. Um, to be able to sit out here and read my Bible with you guys, even though I'm not feeling great, it's um, there's a lot of things to be thankful for. And I can even thank God for the headache because it means that my muscles and everything in my body are working and my immune system's working and all of that jazz so um and it lets me know that I need to sit better and straighten up and you know all of that jazz that I need to do in order to to be healthier and it helps motivate you to to do that a little bit so um now yeah. so proverbs uh 21 is where we're gonna jump into things um so uh the recap so far gotta remember that if i sit back you guys can't hear me as well ah. but hopefully you can hear me okay uh, there was a bit of a revolt. Um, a lot of Israel was in division, like this tribe versus that tribe. No, he's our king or our king. And uh, Shiva uh, was like, you know what? I'm going to capitalize this and I'm going to rise a revolt that Epsilon started because a lot of people are currently against David. Um, and Lord, I lift up uh, the police and whatever's going on over there and um, pray that it's nothing too bad. Um, I haven't seen the fire trucks leave yet, so hopefully it's not bad. Um, no, no, there's more things. So Lord, I lift up the first responders, uh, wherever they're responding to. Um, uh, pray for blessings and everything to them. Uh, the ambulance drivers, Lord, um, I pray that they can have get whoever they need to get to the hospital 
good and you can be there with the nurses and the paramedics as they're figuring out um, the best courses of action and they could bring healing to whomever it was. Um, yeah, sorry about that. Um, yeah, so there's that uh, rebellion going on and uh, we learned that Abel is this town where people would go for knowledge and this guy capitalizing on um, people's fear and anger got him into the city, but it also led to his death as people that were full of more um, were being more obedient ended up winning in, at the end. I'm trying to think about how to say that. Uh, and that's where we're going to go off. Um, Buddy's head was thrown over the wall and Abel was left alone. Uh, so 21. David avenges um, the Gibbonites. And that's where we're going to start reading. So. There was a famine during David's reign that lasted for three years. So David asked the Lord about it. And the Lord said, The famine has come because Saul and his family are guilty of murdering the Gibbonites. So the king summoned the Gibbonites. Uh, they were not part of Israel, but were all that was left of the nation of the Amorites. The people of Israel had sworn not to kill them, but Saul, in his zeal for Israel and Judah, had tried to wipe them out. David asked them, What can I do for you? How can I make amends so that you will bless the Lord, the Lord's people again? Well, money can't settle this matter between us and the family of Saul. The Gibbonites replied, Neither can we demand the life of anyone in Israel. What can I do then? David asked. Just tell me and I will do it for you. They replied, It was Saul who planned to destroy us, to keep us from having any place at all in the territory of Israel. So let seven of Saul's sons be handed over to us, and we will execute them before the Lord at Gibeon, on the mountain of the Lord. All right, the king said. I will do it. The king spared Jonathan's son, Methobosheth, who was Saul's grandson, because the oath David and Jonathan had sworn before the Lord. But as I flip the page, um, he gave them Saul's two sons, Amorine and Mephobesheth, whose mother was Rezpaz, daughter of Ahad. He also gave them five sons of Saul's daughter, Mirab, the wife of Adrel, son of Bezriel from Mohal. The men of Gibbon executed them on the mountain before the Lord. So all seven of them died together at the beginning of the barley harvest. Then Rezpah, daughter of Aha, the and the mother of the two men, spread burlap on a rock and stayed there the entire harvest season. She prevented the scavenging birds from tearing at their bodies during the day and stopped wild animals from eating them at night. When David learned what Rezpah, Rezpah Saul's concubine, had done, he went to the people of Jabesh Gilead and retrieved the bones of Saul and his son Jonathan. When the Philistines had killed Saul and Jonathan among Gilbel, uh, the people of Jabesh Gilead stole their bodies from the public square at Beth Shin, where the Philistines had hung them. So David obtained the bones of Saul's, Saul and Jonathan, as well as the bones of the men the Gebanites had executed. Then the king ordered that they bury the bones in the tomb of Kish, Saul's father at the town of Zela, and the land of Benjamin. After that, God ended the famine in the land. Hi, Joxer. You can totally, I don't know if you guys can hear Joxer, but I can. 
Um, <laughs> all right, continuing from verse uh, 15. Once again, the Philistines were at war with Israel. And when David and his men were in the thick of battle, David became weak and exhausted. Ish ben Ob was the descendant of the Gedonites. His bronze spear had weighed more than seven pounds, and he was armed with a new sword. And he had cornered David and was about to kill him. But Abishai, son of Zerah, came to David's rescue and killed the Philistines. Then David's men declared, You are not going out to battle with us again. Why risk snuffing out the light of Israel? After this, there was another battle against the Philistines at Gob. As they fought, Sebeshiah from Heshen killed Saph, another descendant of the giants. During another battle at Gob, Elanan, son of Jerah, from Bethlehem, killed the brother of Gobeth of Gath. The handle of his spear was thick as a weaver's beam. In another battle with the Philistines at Gath, they encountered a huge man with six fingers on each hand and six toes on each foot, 24 in all, who was also a descendant of the giants. But when he uh, defiled and taunted Israel, he was killed by Jonathan, the son of David's brother, Shimei. These four Philistines were descendants of the giants of Gath, but David and his warriors killed them. May God add a blessing to the reading of his word. Um, once again, uh, in this section, you know, we're seeing some, some fallout of, of sin and the sins of the past. Um, sins that, you know, and consequences of actions that some people didn't take themselves. Um, so often when we, when I talk about, uh, the consequences of sin, it's that personal side of things and that realization like, yes, my sin might affect someone else, which might affect someone else. Uh, especially when it comes to children and our parents and as, as things go on. But, um, it's always that personal side of things. But part of it is like how we respond to that. Um, David didn't correct the mother for mourning because it brought peace to the land and like what Saul did and how he handled himself was something that, you know, was the reason, like this was a result of what he had done. And he did all that. No, she's allowed to mourn. As she deals with the consequences, it's that situation which is awful. And that's one of the reasons why Jesus is so important. Because he breaks that cycle. Um, there's a promise in the Bible that I'm going to misquote awfully. But um, when you choose to go against God... That'll be felt for like a hundred generations. But when you choose to follow God, it'll be, you know, that's going to stay true in your family for a thousand generations. Um, and it's just like that tenfold of keeping God's promise. And both can be true that you can be cursed and blessed at the same time. That you can be in pain, but still be in uh, fine joy. Um, that you can be mourning and find things to be thankful for. Um, and how we deal with the sin of others is something that I think um, and how it impacts us. It's something that I think I can't think of a Bible verse right now why I keep on repeating myself I'm trying to think of a Bible verse um, but it is something that Jesus brings to attention um, and I can't think of a Bible verse right now which I feel sorry for so I apologize but um, you know yeah somebody's sin affects us and our response to it is what's going to be important not just okay so this person sinned and they robbed me and then you know I want to pray for them and I move to pray for the victims but also you know um, you know bigger things like I grew up without knowing my father um, because of his sin and um, you know I need 
to forgive and embrace and be thankful for the people that God has brought into my path to fill that void. Um, or I could just sit there and um, plan revenge for what he did. Um, you know, and that's not, that's just going to make me miserable. Um, and there's a lot of different things that we can do uh, where we can choose to forgive and let God be the judge. Um, but there are consequences. Even when God makes a decision, sometimes those decisions are painful and they're not something that we appreciate. And we get to see the mother cry. We get to see the mother mourn. And David doesn't blame her for mourning. Like, don't you see what God is doing? Why are you sad? God's doing something. And even in the New Testament, like, Lazarus, one of Jesus' friends, dies. And he doesn't go in and rebuke people for mourning. He weeps alongside them. God is with us in our mourning in our suffering and in our joys and in the dull moments of day to day life God we wants to be a part of every aspect of your life let's pray AJC awesome Jesus Christ um, I can start to feel the headache starting to lift and I thank you so much for that um Thank you for jocks for coming in and meowing up a storm. Um, and Lord, I pray that you can get glorified in this. I thank you that reading this ultimately brought me to a place of remembering that you want to be a part of every aspect of our lives. So help us to let you in. Thank you that reading this was a reminder that other, when other people's sin affects us, that yes, we can be sad, but we can still stay focused on you and that there is bad with good and good with bad. Help us to still worship you despite the storms of that and the truth of that and the reality of that. And I thank you that when we choose to follow you, that impacts for a thousand generations. You're awesome, Lord. Thank you. All right. I might have the numbers slightly wrong, but um, yeah. Thank you guys so much for uh, joining me today. Uh, hopefully tomorrow I'll be a little bit more energetic. Uh, and yeah, I got Sassy out with me again today. Isn't that right, Sassy? Yeah. She might need a little bit of uh, a hair trim, but <laughs> yeah. All right. Have a great day. God bless. Bye.